Okay, let's talk about the PAPA assessment. More specifically, this is the Pennsylvania Pre-Service Performance Assessment. And what we're going to be doing is taking a look at a math uh, practice problem for this particular exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are uh, striving to become a teacher in the state of Pennsylvania. So that's uh, excellent. So I congratulate you on your um, uh, choice to become a teacher. Let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math, and I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. So definitely know what it's like to take certification exams and, uh, you know, uh, teach in a classroom and go through everything you got to go through uh, to become a teacher. So you're at a stage in your career where, you know, it's a lot of work just to even get some job experience and get in and start you know, actually learning how to teach. A lot of education, a lot of certification exams, but that's just the nature of what it's like to be a teacher. I often say that um, uh, only those that actually uh, have been a teacher really relate to what it takes to, uh, you know, um, get your certifications and, and teach. Too uh, often, um, a lot of people will critique teachers and they just don't really understand what it takes to become one. So anyways, with that introduction, let me go ahead and uh, talk about mathematics because that's what this video is about. So on the PAPA assessment, you're going to have to know a good amount of mathematics. Okay, So even if you're going to be an elementary teacher, middle school or high school teacher, or your subject area is not math or science, you're going to have to know a good amount of math. I like to classify the level of math as um, high school level mathematics, so a lot of algebra, geometry, and other topics, and you really have to know this stuff because if you don't, um, you can run the risk of not passing this assessment. This is a critical assessment for you, so you need to study. And even if you um, are strong in math, or you know, think back and say, "Oh, I did great in math in high school or in college," that's still not good enough because you have to um, kind of refresh your skills and make sure. All this knowledge is uh, present. Okay, so you're going to have to do some work, but of course, if you were good at math, that's you know um, that's definitely a, a benefit. Okay, uh, before we get started, if you're if you're struggling, and you're looking for some study material. I actually offer an excellent math prep course for this um, assessment. I'll leave the link uh, to that uh, in the description um, of this video. But we'll talk about more of that more about that later. What I have for you here is a question that uh, you should be able to handle with no problem if you expect to do pretty well on the PAPA assessment. So, of course, I'm going to solve the problem, but I want you to go ahead and give it a whirl. Um, even if you're not sure what to do, just imagine if you had to do something, what would you do? And, um, of course, I'm going to go ahead and solve it. So here's the problem. It's the square root of 3x minus 5 is equal to 7. It's an, uh, this is an equation. So go ahead and see if you can solve the equation, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this here momentarily. Okay, so hopefully you're able to um, do this without any problem. This is what we call um, a radical equation, and this is pretty standard stuff from, let's say, high school level, ninth grade algebra one. Okay, so this is not advanced math by any stretch, and Two things here. One, if you if you got this problem right, and of course I'm going to solve it here, that don't you don't want to be overconfident about that. But if you got this wrong, that's definitely a red flag that you need to do some, uh, um, you know, really you know get into studying math. But let's go ahead and solve this. Okay. Now I don't want to turn this into a full lesson on radical equations. There's a lot of different type of equations in algebra that you're going to have to solve. But the main idea here is that we need to get rid of this square root. Okay, and the way we get rid of a square root, let's kind of just go over here real quick. If I had the square root of x, and that is equal to 2, what I'm saying is the square root of some number is equal to 2. And so just think about that. The square root of some number is equal to 2. Now, most of you out there probably say, oh, that number is 4, and you would be correct. But the procedure to solve a radical equation is we need to get rid of this square root sign by uh, squaring it. But if we square one side of the equation, we have to square the other. So the square root of x, uh, the square root of x squared is simply x. Okay, let me write that a little bit better. 
And then, of course, 2 squared is 2 times 2, or 4, so x is equal to 4. Now, there's a little bit of an um, uh, additional thing that you have to be careful with with radical equations, and that's something called extraneous roots. Now, I don't want to get overly technical here, but the main idea is that you need to check your answer into the original equation to make sure it works. So, in other words, our original equation here was the square root of x is equal to 2, we came up with the answer as x equals 4, so we want to substitute x for 4, okay, or 4 for x, and then we want to go ahead and see if this is a true statement. Is the square root of 4 2? Yes, that's a true statement, so in fact, this is a good solution. Now, sometimes you can get a solution when you plug it back in. It is, in fact, a not a true statement. In other words, the 2 do not equal. That's what we call extraneous or extra solution. So, that typically happens when um, the equations are a little bit more involved, but you need to do that. So if anything from this uh, video, hopefully you'll get a little refresher on solving radical equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. Let's go ahead and take the squ uh, square both sides of this equation. Okay, so when we do this, I'm going to get 3x minus 5. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 7 squared, or 49. Okay, so that's the first step. So if you're able to do that, that's excellent. So now I'm going to go ahead and add 5 to both sides of the equation. I'm just going to go ahead and just solve for x, just as I normally would with this linear equation here. So I'm going to get 3x is equal to, this will give me uh, 54, all right? And then I have uh, 3x is equal to 54. Then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3. So real quick, let's see here. Does 3 go into 54? I believe it does. It's just going to do it the long way here. I don't have my calculator handy. So that's going to be 3. Uh, drop down to 4. 3 times 8 is 24. So that's 18. So x is equal to 18. Okay, so... That is our solution. However, it's the solution to this equation. Okay, this equation here, it may or may not be the solution to our original equation, which was this 3x minus 5 is equal to 7. Okay, now again, what we have to do is plug in this um, uh, answer into the original equation just to check to see if this is going to create a true statement. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this would be 3 times 18 minus 5. Does that equal, uh, is that going to equal to 7? So 3 times 18, that will give us 54, right? We just figured that out. So that's 54 minus 5. Is that equal to 7? 54 minus 5 gives me 49. This is the square root of 49, 7. Yes, it's also negative 7, but this is a true statement. That's the main idea here. Okay, so that's the basics of solving a radical equation. Again, you can have much more complicated type of equations, but um, this is a type of problem that would be a standard high school level problem. Okay, so if you... If you got the answer right, but you weren't sure exactly what you were doing or, you know, you know, weren't that confident about it, that's still an indication that you need to go back and, um, you know, review. Now, some of you out there are going to be taking this test. You're going to end up as a um, math teacher. So this stuff you should, you know, definitely know. And, you know, even if you are strong in math, you know, you have an engineering degree, a science degree or whatnot. You know, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree. And I remember from my certification exams, you know, um, they were challenging. Okay, you have to, you know, really get into the swing of doing math. Okay, and the only way to get strong at math is to actually do problems. You know, it's not enough just to do a little bit here, a little bit there, or kind of study it kind of incoherently. You really have to have a good, strong study plan just to kind of, you know, build up that confidence that you're not going to struggle on an assessment like the papa. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Now, the whole idea of my videos is just to help you out, give you some uh, good advice. I've been on YouTube for, at the time of this video, for like over 12 years. 
I really enjoy making math videos. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my uh, channel. So if you like my uh, teaching style, I have a ton of content, and I'm, already, uh, I'm always making new content, so hopefully you'll consider subscribing to my channel. It will definitely help you out for your exam. If you enjoyed the video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, you know, why are you going to become a teacher? Uh, what type, you know, what uh, level are you going to teach? You're going to teach elementary, middle, high school, or what subject? Any feedback is good feedback. So uh, definitely um, enjoy uh, hearing from fellow teachers. I always learn something. And again, I'm going to go ahead and leave. I don't know if I, well, I did mention it, but I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my Papa Math Prep uh, course in the description of this video. All my courses are have taken me several years to build. They're extremely comprehensive, and I think it uh, would be very beneficial to you. So I'll go ahead and leave the link to that in a description. You can check that out if you like. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Uh, we definitely need uh, strong teachers in the classroom, even with uh, everything going on, distance learning, remote education, some people in the classroom, some people learning online eventually everyone's going to be back in the classroom. So, uh, you know, we need we need great teachers. I'm sure you'll be uh, one of them. But, of course, you have to work hard uh, in this profession, no doubt about that. So thank you for your time. I wish you all the best, and have a great day.